we have a UATV special report as a federal investigation is underway against the University of Arkansas. The U of A is one of 181 schools the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Civil Rights is looking into. It is investigating how the university handled three Title IX related cases of sexual misconduct that date back to 2014. Kayla Kimball is a student, writer, and musician. And right now she's in a legal battle with the institution she's attended for the past four years. Well, maybe, like, if the police, like, won't be able to do anything, like, maybe my school can do something. As a sophomore, Kimball was in a long-term relationship with another student at the University of Arkansas. So he, he shares my major. We were in multiple classes together. She says she was sexually assaulted multiple times throughout that year-long relationship. I was, like, unable to consent. Like, I would wake up the next morning and just not know exactly what happened the night before. Kimball first reported the sexual abuse April 21st of 2015. I decided to report to the school because like, I, I didn't feel safe going to my classes. The case went straight to the Title IX coordinator and an investigation started. But after the investigation, the other student was found not responsible. Do you feel that the system failed you? I do. Um, and, like, in finding him not responsible, I, you know, in that way, but also in, like, not protecting me after the fact from not necessarily him, but from like fellow students and professors. Um, is one of the cases that are being investigated your case? Um, yes, one of the cases is my case. Um, and so now it's not even, I, like, I'm of course upset that my abuser was found not responsible, but it's not even like about that anymore. It's so that like other people don't have to be told to leave a class or like don't have to be in a class with someone who assaulted them or abused them. And so like, like that's like what this is about now. Yeah. I spoke with the Director of Student Conduct, Rachel Eikenberry, earlier in the semester, and she says that the Title IX system isn't created to investigate or prosecute criminals, but to decide if a student was in violation of a campus policy. And that report to us and it comes into our hands, we're not looking at this as a crime. We're looking at this as a code of student life violation reached out to Assistant Vice Chancellor of University Relations, Mark Rushing, who says the university is actively gathering information and will comply with all OCR requests. The university feels it, it, it responded to these matters appropriately and in a proactive manner. And he goes on to say the University of Arkansas has zero tolerance for sexual assault and sex offenses. While no aspect of society is free from sexual misconduct, the University of Arkansas is committed to maintaining a safe educational environment free from all forms of sexual intimidation and exploitation. He also says he is not aware of the university being investigated before now. According to the letter sent to Chancellor Steinmetz last month, the university is being investigated for two potential violations. The first is whether or not the university provided prompt and equitable responses to complaints, reports, and incidents of sexual harassment or violence. In other words, did the university respond in a timely manner? According to the Division of Student Affairs Student Handbook, the Title IX office has up to 60 days to complete an investigation before a hearing. Kimball filed her report on April 21st of last year. She was not notified of a hearing until July 27th. That's more than 90 days later. The other student was on a study abroad trip at this time, so the hearing was pushed back to August 14th of last year. We reached out to university officials regarding this allegation, and they say the Office of Civil Rights recommends that typical cases be educated in a specific time period, but recognizes there are circumstances that would extend the process. These circumstances include breaks in academic year where witnesses are unable to participate in the investigation. The second investigation asks whether or not this potential failure allowed any students to be subjected to a sexually hostile environment that denied or limited the student's ability to participate or benefit from the university's programs. The Title IX hearing concluded on August 21st, while the other student was found not responsible. The hearing did uphold a no-contact order. The other student was ordered to refrain from any type of communication with her. Kimball and this student were placed in a situation where they may have had class together soon after. On August 31st, a university professor asked Kimball 
for the no contact order through emails obtained exclusively by UATV. Two days later, Kimball received an email from this professor stating, quote, I have decided it best that you refrain from participating in inspirational chorale this semester. When she asked for clarification, the professor stated the other student had come to him to discuss the situation three weeks prior and would remain in the class. It is important to note that there was a no contact order against Kimball. UATV reached out, but the professor in question was not available for comment. In response to this complaint, the university issued a response, saying the university did not deny the complainant access to any class. Kimball was eventually allowed to return to class after reaching out to the Title IX office. However, she dropped the class after her classmates made her feel uncomfortable. The U of A has kept record of the amount of rapes that have been reported to UAPD. In 2012, four were reported, with three being in an on-campus residence facility. In 2013, five were reported, with all of them being in an on-campus residence facility. And in 2015, there were three rapes reported, with two reports of dating violence. So why do schools have to release this information? Well, in 1990, the Cleary Act was signed into law. This requires colleges and universities, both public and private, that participate in federal student aid programs to disclose campus safety information. It also imposes certain basic requirements for handling incidents of sexual assault, stalking, domestic violence, and dating violence. State Representative Greg Letting is working on a study that examines sexual assault and rapes on college campuses. He's working to educate fellow lawmakers about the rape culture here in Arkansas. Even though he's only eight months into his study, he says he can already tell that there's a problem. I would say it's, it's disappointing. I don't think anybody would deny that these kinds of things haven't been happening on campus, uh, but certainly we would hope that the campus is doing everything it can to prevent them and to respond in a proper and fair manner. Um, even if ultimately the Department of Education clears the university of mishandling these three cases, I think it's clear that the campus still has some work to do because you have at least three students now who uh, felt that they were not treated fairly and took the step of contacting the Department of Education. As he wants to find a solution and hold the schools accountable. Researcher and University of Arkansas professor Kristen Jaskowski joined Letting's initiative last month. She's looking closely into the dynamic and demographics of assaults in hopes of finding a solution. Unfortunately, this is a huge problem, so the solution will have to be long term and probably include a lot of large cultural changes. She says that one in five women in college will be a victim of sexual assault. According to a poll conducted by the Washington Post and the Kaiser Family Foundation, three in ten college students say friends or acquaintances have told them that they're victims of sexual assault. However, three-fourths of all victims have told someone, but only 11% told the police or the institution. According to the National Sexual Violence Resource Center, rape is the most underreported crime because 63% go unreported. All this goes as the prevalence of false reporting is between 2 and 10%. The U of A isn't the only SEC school under investigation. As you can see on your screen, five other schools are also being investigated. These schools include the University of Tennessee, Vanderbilt, Texas, A&M, LSU, and the University of Kentucky. Tennessee has two open inv investigations against it, while the other schools only have one. And schools near the U of A that are also being investigated include Kansas, Kansas State, the University of Tulsa, and Oklahoma State. But multiple young women at Brigham Young University claim that they received backlash instead of support after reporting sexual violence to the school. A student, Maddie Barney, only reported her alleged rape to police because it happened off campus. So she was shocked when she got the call from BYU's Title IX office. What she essentially said on that phone call was, we received a police report. Um, and in it, A, we think you may have been raped, and B, it looks like you probably violated the honor code as well. I felt so betrayed because they read every single thing that happened to me, and they just kind of didn't care. Barney learned her police report was given to BYU by a friend of a rapist. Now the school won't let her register for future classes until she cooperates with the honor code office. The university says it's now studying current practices and procedures. The relationship between the Title IX office and the Honor Code office. We want to look at whether and how information is shared. We want to look at the perception that students have. An online petition has been made urging the university to give immunity to those who make sexual violence reports 
and not investigate them for honor code violations has more than 111,000 signatures. This has been a special UATV report. I'm Sawyer Bussey. And I'm Megan Bedenikovic. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault or rape, contact UAPD. The number is on the back of your student ID. Also, services for victims and survivors of sexual assault or relationship violence are available at the Pat Walker Health Center Star Central Office, room 277. Resources are also available online at itsonus.org. Have a great night.